Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking to our distinguished guest today, Zahra Sultana Hussain, an accomplished artist, about her work and about her thoughts. What does she depict and how people look at it? Uh, Zahra, mm. I see in your paintings a combination of geometrical and paisley patterns. What do they mean to you and what do you intend to depict? Okay. Um, well, uh, there are... We can talk about uh, your Plimsist 1 and Plimsist uh, uh, 2. Okay. All right. So I would call that one Plimsist 1, the uh, um, landscape. I did that first and the other one second. Uh, so tell us, for the benefit of our viewers who can't understand the landscape, what sort of landscape is it? Okay, it's a landscape of my feelings and my emotions mm -hmm. and my inner space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so I have used uh, various things. Uh, one of them, for example, uh, is the Paisley design. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you see, the Paisley design comes as a border. And I grew up with my mum wearing a sari. Right. Always. That's Always. Sharir Par. Yeah. Wherever we were, lived in England and Pakistan and anywhere and everywhere, she mm -hmm. never wore anything else apart from a sari mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were mostly paisley designs mm -hmm. or a few of the time were geometrical designs. Right. So okay. that brings the paisley. The geometry, paisley has other, other it's a design, it's a pattern Did that repeats. Did you pick it up from uh, the Persian miniatures? Yes, the paisley design uh, are there, uh, but the geometrical designs and calligraphy mm -hmm. are definitely very, very clearly there. Mm -hmm. And I have picked up, I've picked up my color from the Persian miniatures, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that was amazing when I looked at the colors that they uh, combined to make the miniatures and how they worked. Um, and I was looking at them when I was doing my BA, so it mm -hmm. was earlier mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And I've just stuck to those mm -hmm. colors. They work very well for me. And, and by toning them up or down, you can make them look sadder or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or happier. You can do that with a color like pink or, or red. Or possibly angrier. Anything, mm -hmm. anything you can. When you say toning them down, is it the different various shades of the same color? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mixing it with gray, mm -hmm. making it look sad. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you use pink in the purest form, mm -hmm. it's like a butterfly. It's like mm -hmm. a flower mm -hmm. uh, that you mm -hmm. see in its pure form in nature. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, you could you could you could use any color to show what you want to show from it. So, so the colors definitely came from the Penish Persian miniatures and, and the geometrical patterns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They came from uh, the tal design that are all over the mosques, all mm -hmm. over, even in the manuscripts, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. in the Quran, there's patterns, paisley as well as geometrical. And, and the idea that uh, if you use pattern, it's repeated by definition and it gives you the sense of continuity. Right. Even if the canvas is full, you know the pattern will continue in the same way as you see them. Right. So you know tomorrow will be like today, mm -hmm. which is how I grew up. Life so, is. Yes, life was. <laughs> life was. <laughs> and uh, so the pattern brings stability, safety, mm -hmm. security, mm -hmm. order, discipline. Mm -hmm. um, and I love you. So somehow I just love uh, the geometrical patterns. It's, yeah. it's a part of me. Uh, it, it what in your Plemsist one, isn't it? Yes. Uh, what is there for the reader? I mean, I, uh, to you it's very easy to say that this represents that. So, yes. But uh, how to get into your mind and understand that the various uh, colors, strokes, uh, the different uh, shapes represent this? How can, can, you, can we do it? And, 
easy to understand? <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> is, the, is, is the easy, quick answer because what I've experienced, you haven't. So yes. you won't see mm -hmm. it from my perspective. Right. And if you were an artist, you would do something different. Right. And I wouldn't see it from your perspective. Right. But the, the, the painting itself uh, has meaning mm -hmm. uh, in general. It's, w it's what meaning you take from a, p a piece of work. So, uh, yeah, so uh, looking at my, my painting, I might describe it as A, B, C, mm -hmm. and somebody mm -hmm. will describe it as say, no, no, it's mm -hmm. one, two, three. Mm -hmm. And it could be just the opposite. But uh, in a painter's life, uh, sometimes uh, I've heard, read, that the critics uh, matter a lot, see. And the critics, uh, like drama critics or, or the film critics, they can make or mar a film or, or the life of a director, see. Have you ever experienced that? Does it happen, really? Uh, critics' uh, views? Yeah, being very different and... Yes, uh, from than that of yours. All the time, all the time. Uh, I, see, I, I find people saying, I can see a dancer here, I can yes, see... Um, a happy time. Uh, in, in my university, they would say there is so much layering, mm -hmm. it's too busy. But that's the amazing thing that uh, uh, subconsciously I've picked up. You know, th on the streets in Pakistan as well as Bangladesh, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. walls, mm -hmm. nobody would. Uh, tries to re uh, remove all the the, graffiti. the graffitis and the posters. They mm -hmm. put one on top yes. of the other, yeah. and some is torn. Another layer <laughs> is put on. Uh, the cinemas. I used to love going to mm -hmm. movies and yes, uh, the pictures. Cinema posters. Yes, <laughs> posters were busy, and I am happy with mm -hmm. uh, that. And uh, my critiques are, you know, if. They are UK, British critics, European critics. Mm -hmm. uh, they are used to seeing something and they are comfortable with something Something like different. what you paint. Something a little bit quieter or not so busy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is art. Uh, it's out of my control. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was doing my BA, my palette was different from uh, the girls and boys next to me. True, true. And I was shocked because my education was not in Bangladesh or Pakistan. Right. Um, it was here. So why would my color palette be different? Mm -hmm. It was just naturally different. Mm -hmm. So we are who we are. We, I, I can't say I'm an European. I'm mm -hmm. a Bengali, Bangladeshi, right. or a Pakistani. Yes, yes. Right. Uh, my passport doesn't change that. that yes, so. Yes. Yeah, so what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> My question is, uh, it's a different one. <laughs> uh, how much of your experience influence your painting? Does oh, it, totally. How much of it, yes? Totally, totally. Because not only the painting itself, a palimpsest one, mm -hmm. as you notice, it's a landscape. Yeah. And at that time, I was working or looking at the issue, which was how I felt being a migrant, uh, a different culture, mm -hmm. dealing with the freedom that the West gives you, mm -hmm. uh, and how that freedom of choice and decisions has also brought chaos, mm -hmm. disorder, destruction, unfulfillment, uh, sadness, mistakes. Um, so I, I was exposed to all of that. Mm. So I, I, I looked at uh, R Robert Rosenberg, the movement in the 1960s in America, mm -hmm. where it was the time to paint what you like, uh, throw the paint on, like Jackson Pollock's with yeah. the drapes or... Work on it. Work on it. Or it doesn't Ha it doesn't have to have a, a, an aesthetic sense that people are used to having. Yeah. In fact, they did just the opposite, challenge it, see how that looks, mm -hmm. see what the critics say to that. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, you know, spice it up a little bit. So, so it was that age. 
and and I've used that because I feel I was exposed to mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. indecisions and and the chaos of making decisions when there is no routine, no pattern, no safety. There wasn't a safety net. Mm -hmm. So as a human being, I felt uh, completely confused and chaos. And I think that's one of the things that my work does show that, you know, chaos and confusion. When, when you sit down, I mean, this side on a very good day, it's nice and bright to see with your beautiful garden in the background and your, on one side of your house is your gallery, see. How do you plan your painting? Mm. Well, After uh, a nice cup of tea, you sit there and say, suddenly an idea comes to your mind or it has been planned uh, overnight or for several days? No, ideas don't come to my mind like that. Um, there is almost like a ritual. Mm -hmm. I go to my studio, I clean it up. That's the first thing I do. Even if it's clean, I have to uh, redo it, uh, redo it. <laughs> make sure the paint is all closed again, the mm -hmm. surface is mm -hmm. cleaned, and the brushes are in order, the palette knife. Mm -hmm. Just bring order into right. the studio mm -hmm. again. And just by removing bits and pieces of paint from here and there, yes. tidying things up, yes. that, that ritual just engages me. Just, it's like finding you, 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 a room you, 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 full you are, of toys. You are into the rhythm of the yeah. painting. Yeah, it's like finding a room with toys. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to play. Yes. And yeah, I suppose if you just go into a room with play and you don't know which one to do, what to do. Yeah, you, 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 you're not too sure. Mm -hmm. So by just putting it back in its place, I, I don't even know how it starts. The mm -hmm. Tidying up stops, paint brushes in my hand, and I'm ready to go. But it's not like some divine message. Suddenly you receive it and you start painting. It must have come in a stages in your mind. It says you one stroke, another stroke this color, that color, well, you must have planned it. Some, the planning, yes, you're right, the, the pattern element, which I, is the first part of my mm -hmm. painting, uh, is definitely planned. I make the stencils, which is very laborious. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, the paisley uh, uh, comes from the computer, enlarge it, put it on paper, cut the paper, mm -hmm. and and then very methodically go through it. And that's the kind of the discipline mm -hmm. and the discipline I was born, mm -hmm. brought up with comes in. And then, like life, nothing is intact. True. Things are destroyed. And that's when the self-expressive uh, action or, or part of it comes in, that I need to spoil it. I, it it's not like that for me. It's not perfect. Has it ever happened to you that you have painted something, you spent quite some time and you're not happy with it? Yes, all the time. And that's why I never do one painting at a time. I, my walls are full of canvases in mm -hmm. different stages. Mm -hmm. So I would have like four, five, ten, fifteen even mm -hmm. of different sizes. And, and the other thing I was saying that when I was doing the journey, I took this um, going back one stage mm -hmm. question. Um, I, was, I was doing the journey. These lines means journey to me. Mm -hmm. To me, they mean it's a journey going through different darkness, lightness, different mm -hmm. textures, what l experiences I've got. So it's, it's a journey. But then I changed my subject and, dis and I knew that there was something else I'm not dealing with mm -hmm. the journey. Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with motherhood and issues of motherhood and feeling abandoned, uh, not having that co you know, the connection. Okay. So that's how the canvas okay, changed. Okay, time has uh, come again for, for us to take a break. Okay. When we come back, we'll definitely talk about uh, Premsist 2. Okay, lovely. Thank you, Vyas, for being with us. Uh, we are having a wonderful time here. And uh, this uh, commercial break is needed. So when we come back, we'll continue this discussion. Thank you. Don't go away. <laughs>